Welcome to this scratch tutorial. Let's get started the part two of the snake and ladder. First, we need a sprite as dice. Go to the sprite library and click on the paint option to create a new sprite. Draw a square shape to represent the dice. Add numbers or dots for each side, one through six. Each side of the dice will be a separate costume. Costume one, dice face showing one dot. Costume two, dice face showing two dots. Costume three, dice face showing three dots. Costume four, dice face showing four dots. Costume five, dice face showing five dots. Costume six, dice face showing six dots. Two dots, continue until costume six. Name the sprite dice. We need two sprite because we are creating two player game. Add two penguins. Start by selecting the penguin sprite from the sprite library. Once added, duplicate it so you have two identical penguins in your project. To make each penguin unique, we'll change their colors. Select the first penguin and navigate to the costumes tab. Using the fill tool, change the color scheme to black. This penguin will now be referred to as the black penguin. For the second penguin, follow the same steps, but use the fill tool to give it a blue color. This penguin will be referred to as the blue penguin. Once customized, rename the sprites accordingly, black penguin and blue penguin. Now let's make the dice functional. Here's the code you'll add. Drag the when space key pressed block to the coding area. This block will trigger the dice roll whenever the space bar is pressed. Next, add the show block to ensure the dice is visible when the roll starts. Use the repeat 16 block to create the rolling animation. Inside this block, place the switch costume block. Inside that add pick random one to six from operator category. This makes the dice switch costumes randomly, simulating a roll. After the animation, create a variable and name it as dice value. Use the set dice value block and add costume number inside this. This sets a variable to store the result of the roll. Finally, add the hide block to make the dice disappear and the broadcast dice roll block to send a message to other sprites in the project. Let's test it out. We need to prepare a system that saves the coordinates for each block on our snakes and ladders board. For this, we'll create two lists, one for the X coordinates and another for the Y coordinates of all 100 blocks on the board. Instead of entering these manually, we'll generate the values using a script. This way, our process is efficient and accurate. Oh no! Let's first generate the X coordinates. When the green flag is clicked, we want to ensure everything starts clean. So the first thing we do is clear any existing values in the X list. Drag the block delete all of X into your code. This ensures that every time we run the program, the X list resets and we start fresh without any leftover data. Next, we need to tell our code where to begin placing blocks on the board, create a variable called XVAR, set its initial value to negative 211 using the set XVAR to negative 211 block, this is the X coordinate where the first block of our board will be placed. As you know, normally the snake and ladder start from the number one. Now comes the fun part, generating the X coordinates for the board. A snakes and ladders board has rows that alternate direction. The first row moves left to right, the next row moves right to left, and so on. To handle this, we'll use a repeat loop. Here's how, drag a repeat block and set it to five. This means we're going to loop through the process for five rows. Inside this loop, we'll program the X coordinates for each row. Each row on our board has 10 blocks. But here's a little trick. We'll handle the first nine blocks using another loop and take care of the last block separately. Here's how to do it. Drag another repeat block inside the first loop and set it to nine. Inside this second loop, add the block add X var to X. This saves the current X coordinate to the list. Add the block change X var by 48. This moves the X coordinate by 48 pixels to the right. This part of the code generates the first nine blocks for the row. After the inner loop, we need to handle the last block in the row. Add the block add X var to X. This saves the final X coordinate of the row to the list. To make sure the rows alternate directions, duplicate the inner loop, but this time replace change X var by 48 with change X var by minus 48. This tells the code to move left instead of right for the next row. Key outer loop runs five times to create five rows. 
The inner loop runs nine times to generate the first nine blocks of a row. The last block is added separately after the inner loop. The direction alternates between rows by switching between 48 and negative 48. What does the number 48 mean? So every time we move to the next block in a row, we're adding 48 to the x coordinate. How did we get the number 48? To understand, we need to know how wide the scratch stage is. The scratch stage is 480 units wide in total. Imagine this like a big number line, with 240 units to the right of the center, positive x values, and 240 units to the left of the center, negative x values. So the full width of the stage is 240 plus 240 equals 480 units. Now let's think about our snakes and ladders board. Each row has 10 blocks and we want them to fit perfectly across the width of the stage. To figure out how much space each block needs, we divide the total width of the stage, 480 units, by the number of blocks in a row, 10. Here's the math. 480 divided by 10 equals 48. So each block gets exactly 48 units of space. This is why we change the x value by 48 when moving from one block to the next. Let's picture it. Start at negative 211, our first block. Move 48 units to the right for the next block. Keep adding 48 until you've placed all 10 blocks in the row. By the end of the row, the blocks will perfectly fill the stage from left to right. Just like we did for the x coordinates, the first thing we need to do is start fresh. Add the when green flag clicked block to your script, then drag in the block delete all of y. This clears any existing y coordinates from the y list so we can generate the new ones. Next, we set the starting y coordinate for the bottom row of our board. Create a variable called yvar if you don't already have it. Use the block set yvar to negative 161, y negative 161. This is the y coordinate of the first block in the bottom row. Now let's generate the y coordinates for the 10 rows on our board. Here's how, use a repeat loop set to 10 because our board has 10 rows. Inside the loop, add the y coordinate for each block in the row. Drag the block add y var to y. This saves the current y coordinate to the y list. But wait, each row has 10 blocks, right? So how do we handle that? Let me explain. All the blocks in a single row share the same y coordinate. For example, in the first row, all 10 blocks will have the same negative 161 y coordinate. After finishing one row, we move to the next by increasing the y var value. Once we've added the y coordinate for a full row, we need to move up to the next row. To do this, outside the inner loop, but still inside the outer loop, add the block change y var by 36. Why 36? Let's figure it out together. The total height of the scratch stage is 360 units. It extends 180 units above the center, positive y values, and 180 units below the center, negative y values. Since our board has 10 rows, we divide the total height 360 divided by 10 equals 36. This means each row is spaced 36 units apart vertically. By changing y var by 36, we're aligning the blocks perfectly, row by row. How cool is that? Now that we've generated both x and y coordinates, our board is fully set up. The x list contains the horizontal positions for all 100 blocks. The y list contains the vertical positions for the 10 rows. Together, these lists create the perfect grid for our snakes and ladders board. The last piece of the puzzle is moving the penguin across the board based on the dice roll. We'll handle the logic for the dice and move the penguin to the correct x and y coordinates in the next part of this tutorial. So stay tuned for that! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have questions. See you in the next video! Bye!